cables, tools, pedals. I think we're good to go. Hello one and all, my name is Ryan Bruce. My friends call me Fluff and today we're gonna build me a studio pedal board. Now Friedman Amps just kind of relaunched their pedal board line and basically made it so you can either get just the board or you can add some bells and whistles, which we will talk about in just a second. However, this pedal board that I have in front of me that we will be working with today is the model number 1317. And this is the smallest of the pedal boards that they currently offer in their lineup. There's many different sizes of pedal boards. I chose the smallest one they make, and I also chose the Pro Kit, and that includes the Freeman Power Grid and the uh, Freeman Buffer Bay, which we will be installing today. Now, before we go any further, this is not a sponsored video. Dave Freeman is actually just a buddy of mine, and I was asked if I had any use for any of the uh, the new things that they were putting out. Did I have any use for a pedal board? And I looked at my pedal situation here at the studio and I thought, yeah, yeah, I got a use for it. So what is the objective with this video and this pedal board? Well, we have the 1317, we have a buffer, which is basically just a patch bay, and we have the power supply. And first, I need to evaluate what my needs are for this specific pedal board. So first, this is not going to be a traveling pedal board. I'm not going to be touring with this. I'm not gonna be playing shows with this. This is for me, here, my studio in a recording situation or a demoing situation. And typically I am switching in and out of the pedal chain that I have going, uh, a lot of overdrives, a lot of overdrives. If I'm boosting, if you know, different flavors of things, I'm using a ton of different overdrives at any given time. But I have a core set that I typically will go through to check out things like new amps, things like that. Now the Tour Pro 1317 has uh, some ins and outs, as you can see, some slots, some screw holes, and it also has this platform, which is good for a wah pedal. I am not going to be utilizing a wah pedal with this specific setup, so first, I need to go ahead and remove this before we can start planning where I want what pedals. <laughs> All right, so this is what we have to work with. Now, the pedals I know I want for sure are my TC Sentry Noise Gate, my TC Electronic Polytune. Now, why am I gonna choose the Polytune over my favorite chromatic, uh, chromatic tuner TU3 from Boss? Well, I have found that if I'm at an angle, if I'm back like on my on my chair or at my desk and I'm looking down, the angle of which I have a hard time seeing, so then I have to kind of do this. I don't have to do that with the Polytune. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the Polytune for my tuner for this pedal board build, but I can change it at any time if I really wanted to. So tuner, noise gate. I know I want a dirty tree. I know I want the Fortin Saw, maybe. I also really enjoy the Maxon OD9. It's one of my go-to overdrives. I also like the Maxon Super Tube. And you know what? For a classic, a Boss SD1. I also have a Digitech Drop. This is kind of a utilitarian pedal for me. And this would need to be you know, up front towards the middle, or up front <clears throat> as far as the signal chain goes. These are the pedals that I would pretty much use. I don't know, I mean, I could use an OD808X. Again, I'm gonna make it so I can just switch this out at any time. However, mm, yeah, let's do the Maxon. I like the Maxon, both the Maxons are good. I don't know, I feel like the OD808 is a little overkill if I already have the uh, the OD9. I definitely want the Dirty Tree. Yeah, let's just go with this for now. This will be what I use for now for my pedals. So now we need to put everything together. So I have these 
So I have these Ernie Ball ribbon cables. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, well, that works out. Um, but I'm gonna need a longer boy. I don't know if this is gonna reach. That will not reach. However, I don't know if I actually want four pedals up top. What I'm thinking is maybe I have my top as my kind of always on or always present and then the bottom shelf is kind of my rotational pedal lineup. That sounds pretty good. And in that case, I am going to go ahead and I am going to, yeah, see, this is tough. I guess I'm gonna take the saw off for now and I'm going to leave this just like this. So really, I need to make sure this reaches there, probably will. I can utilize the slots here, so I'm gonna take this off. That seems like it would work. Let's take these off. Let's take that off. Whoops, there goes my screwdriver. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing I need to do before I can start wiring anything up is I need to install the power supply, which goes on the underside of the board. Now, I'm just gonna simply place this like this, and it will just... All right, next, I am not sure I want to use this buffer bay yet. Maybe I'll go ahead and install it just, just in case. Yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and install this just in case I want to use it down the road. I don't know, I'm not totally sure. I need to get the pedal set up before I can really kind of decide how I want to utilize, uh, utilize the patch bay, the buffer bay, basically. Now I am free to start laying down my, my 3M dual lock to keep the pedals in place. Now we're going to actually choose the pedals final placement. Now, since I am not touring with this, what I am thinking I'm gonna do is I'm just going to lay down a single strip of dual lock. That way in the future, I can just lay down uh, pedals as I see fit with just a little bit of dual lock just to keep them in place. I think this is a good solution. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so. I'm going to, since we're not going all the way over, you know what, I should actually do the bottom first. And this is just a, this doesn't have to be exact. This is not an exact science at all. And we'll put it down just like that. Okay, that's my first strip of dual lock. There. Now it's time to play some pedals. So I'm just gonna start laying some, some vertical strips of dual lock on these pedals. They don't have to be big. Again, I'm not touring with these, right? So I just wanna get an approximation. Right, so for this guy, I'm gonna set the legs right here and I'm not gonna be actively being like stomping on these or anything like that either. These are basically just gonna be stationary and for me to turn off and on as I need them. Cool, 
I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest. All right, so here is the finished board. I went ahead and just wired up the whole thing off camera because who wants to see 45 minutes of, uh, will it fit? Will it fit? Is it long enough? Is it long enough? Pedal board building is something I haven't done in a long time. I used to have to do it a lot as a broke young person that played a lot of shows back in the day. However, the frustration of having a cable that needs to be a millimeter longer is unparalleled with anything else on this planet. Um, I ran into a few cable snags, I, my patch cables, uh, namely the cable going from the Digitech drop down and through to the Pepper's Dirty Tree that I had ended up being, like I said, literally like a millimeter too short to make it work. So I actually had to run to my storage unit and get, <laughs> and dig through what I had because I didn't have any more patch cables here at the house. I was able to find one and I made the whole thing work. I did end up using and utilizing the buffer because I like the idea of having um, my in and out points for my guitar and going to my amp on the same side and on the end. So I like utilizing that. The power supply is nice and clean. I utilized all but one of the power taps. So, because the buffer has to be powered as well. So that gives us eight power points and the, the Freeman power, uh, power supply has nine. So yeah. I guess, uh, I guess all that's left now is just plug it in and uh, power it up. Now, the one thing I am kind of worried about is the Digitech drop. This is, uh, this is a huge power suck. It's nine volts, but it's a uh, 300 milliamps, which I believe is the max of output for any one of the outputs for the Friedman. So let's go ahead and see. Same power's on. <laughs> we have power. Beautiful. Yeha. All right. That's a feeling of triumph right there. That feels good. All right. So, what are my thoughts? Uh, the Freeman pedalboard stuff is awesome. I like the integration of the buffer and the power supply. Um, it's heavy gauge, but it's not crazy heavy uh, metal. This is not plastic. This is made in the USA and just the pedal board retails for a hundred and about 170 bucks. And the whole tour package with the buffer and power supply included is about $500 for this size board. Okay. So, you can pick and choose what you want. You can also get them individually later on down the road if you so choose. But uh, yeah, shout out to my buddy Dave for sending me the pedal board and encouraging my studio organization. I will link down below in the description if you would like more information on the entire Friedman pedal board. And with that, you've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.